Hi everyone! Today I decided to actually talk a little bit about wedding dress shopping. I I think I have a lot of personal experience when it comes to this topic. Um, I had a little bit of drama with my own wedding dress, so I feel like I have some of those experiences to share, and then as well as just some practical tips for you all that I've kind of picked up along the way. Um, I did make a few mistakes when I went wedding dress shopping, and I feel like if I do share those personal experiences, um, maybe you guys can learn from those mistakes and not repeat what I did. This is probably going to be more of a ramble video, not exactly super organized, so I do apologize for that um, up front, but I think this might help a lot of people out there who just really do not know the first thing about wedding dress shopping. So if you're interested in hearing what I have to say, stay tuned. Okay, so the main reason I wanted to make this video is because when I was first starting to go wedding dress shopping, I was really completely lost, to be honest with you. I really didn't know what to expect during an actual dress shopping experience, and I really wanted some insight on what an actual dress shopping experience was like. Um, the first thing I do want to talk about is budget. I think when it comes to your wedding gown, this is probably one of the easiest things um, to blow when it comes to your budget. It's kind of easy to just say, well, this truly is a once in a lifetime experience. I'm just going to completely blow what I was planning on spending just because um, I'm never going to be able to buy a dress again like this. When you are setting your wedding budget and you do set a budget for your wedding gown, don't exceed it by any means. Um, you set that budget for a reason. Going over like a couple hundred dollars is fine because then you can easily take that away from something else in your budget by blowing it a few thousand dollars, then it does create some problems. You, you really need to stay focused on staying on your price point and not tempting yourself. This was the first mistake I personally made. I had set a modest budget for my wedding gown and I went and I tried on a dress by Amsale. If anyone is familiar with wedding gowns, Amsale is a higher end designer. I saw this dress in a magazine and I had to try it on and it was three times my budget and I should not have done that. I should have just said, you know what, I can't afford that dress because when I did go try it on at Saks, I was blown away. It was the first dress I tried on and I immediately just felt amazing in it and I just, that was the dress for me. I didn't even want to look anywhere else. I just wanted to buy this dress and move on, um, but I couldn't afford it. So. The thing with that was, I had talked a lot um, back and forth with Josh, and he finally, I remember this day very, very clearly, we were at our favorite Mexican restaurant, which is no longer in business, so don't even get me started on that, but we were at our favorite Mexican restaurant, eating our enchiladas, <laughs> and he just turned to me and said, you should get that dress. And he's like, I just want you to be happy on our wedding day, I don't want you to settle for your dress. He's like, we'll figure out a way to pay for it. So I slept on it, and... A few days later, I just decided I had to be responsible, and I just, I couldn't blow, it was a $4,200 dress, I could not blow that much money on our wedding dress because we had family pitching in to pay for part of our wedding, and I just didn't want them to be paying for something else that we could have easily paid for if I had purchased a dress that was within my budget. I'm not sure if that made sense to you guys. I hope it did. Um, but moral of the story, do not try any dresses on that you know you absolutely cannot afford. Just bottom line, it's just going to end up breaking your heart in the end. It's just going to make things a lot more difficult for you. So when you do set a wedding budget, only look at dresses that fall within that budget. You, I mean, you can go a couple hundred more over just because there is some um, negotiating room with wedding dress shopping. If you have finally set on a dress, you, you know what one you want, and you're able to pay for it that day, you can usually tell the sales associate, you know what, I want to buy this dress today, but this is what I can pay. Um, there is room for negotiation, but not too much. Don't go crazy. Don't say, you know, I want a $2,000 discount on this dress. If you say, can you take off a couple hundred dollars, they usually will say yes. So that is a really good tip for you guys. So that's a really easy way that if you do find a dress that's maybe like three or four hundred over your budget, you might be able to get it for, you know, what you originally budgeted for. So that is my little spiel on budgeting. So, moving on to the actual dress shopping experience when you step foot into a bridal salon and um, what you can expect from there. Um, it's kind of a weird experience, I'm not going to lie. Um, I'm the type of person, though, that doesn't really like a lot of attention on me. I really kind of found the whole experience to be a little bit overwhelming, but there are ways to make yourself a lot more comfortable during the experience. One, and this is going to sound weird and probably TMI, but wear decent undergarments, guys. It's really important because 80% of that time when you're actually shopping, you're going to be standing around in your underwear. So 
Um, wear a practical bra. Don't wear anything that you wouldn't wear on your wedding day. You don't have to have a strapless bra because there's a small chance that you could purchase a dress that requires a bra with straps. So um, any basic bra will do. And then, you know, underwear that you're comfortable showing yourself in. Um, usually boy shorts are probably the way to go. You know, more coverage. <laughs> um, I'm sorry, I know that probably is a little bit TMI, but it's just something to keep in mind. I know that when I first went dress shopping, I like didn't even think about that and I was slightly embarrassed by what I was wearing. The other thing is who to bring with you when you go dress shopping. Um, I'm sure that any of you out there that do watch Say Yes to the Dress, I know that personally it makes me cringe when I see those people walk in with an entourage of like 10 people. Um, it's just you're not going to really get a lot accomplished when you have that many people surrounding you. I know that for some families it does work and I'm not trying to be judgmental. If you went running dress shopping with a group of like eight or ten people and it worked for you, that's fine. I'm just saying that typically from what I've seen it's not as productive as it could be. Um, I usually have to suggest no more than three people with you at a time. It just makes for a much easier and um, worry-free session when you are dress shopping. And honestly, I went dress shopping by myself a lot. Of the time, and when I went by myself is when I actually found my wedding dress. I think it's kind of easier to focus, not worry about too much what other people are thinking, and really focus on what you're thinking and what you're liking and what you're not. I know that when you go wedding dress shopping, there are so many emotions involved, especially if you have, you know, moms and grandmas going with you. Um, if they start tearing up at a dress that you don't necessarily like, then you might feel obligated to lean towards that one a little bit. So those are just some examples um, of situations that I think can easily be avoided. When you go dress shopping for the first time, personally, I would recommend that you go by yourself, and here's why. The first dress shopping session should really just be focused on finding a silhouette that you like. Um, it's really easy when you go into the whole experience to say, I can only wear this kind of dress. It's the only dress that's going to look good on me. And I think that's a very common misconception. When you go wedding dress shopping, it's not like you're going clothes shopping. So the silhouettes that you think look good on you in everyday life are going to look very different on you in wedding gowns because gowns are more well constructed and they just fit differently. I know that personally when I first went shopping, I was convinced that I could only wear A-line dresses because I feel like my hips are the smallest part of my body and I wanted to accentuate that. Um, it took a while, but I brought one cousin with me. She was my bridesmaid and I took her with me because she just has a sense for fashion and just knows what looks good on people. And she convinced me to put myself into a mermaid trumpet style dress and lo and behold, it was a style that I really liked on me and I would never have tried it on unless I had an open mind. So during your first session, try on a bunch of different silhouettes. Even though you think you are absolutely going to hate them, you could surprise yourself very easily. Make sure that you love the style that you end up picking out and then the next few times that you do go dress shopping, you can just go right into the salon and say, this is the silhouette I want and then you can start talking a little bit more about details and fabric and overlays and things like that. So. That's what I suggest for your first few times out. Don't bring a lot of people with you if you can avoid it and try out as much as you can and keep an open mind. And then going back to what I said before also, try on a lot of dresses. This is a mistake, again, <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes when I was dress shopping people. This is a mistake, again, that I wish that I hadn't made. Unfortunately, because I was so overwhelmed with the wedding dress shopping experience, I just kind of wanted to get it over with. I just wanted to put the money down, find a dress that I liked, and move on. Um, I ended up finding a dress that was by Waters and Waters, a designer that if you read my Elegant Owl blog, you know that I love. Um, I found it online. I was like, you know what, that will probably work for me. It ended up being a mermaid trumpet style dress. And I had an appointment at White Chicago. Basically they sell wedding gowns that have been worn once by previous brides, so you can then buy them for a very steep discount. I went in there, lo and behold they had this water dress that I was looking for. Completely random because their stock room is just filled with different and weird sizes and dresses and, um, and designers. You would never think that they would have this one dress that I was looking for. People, it was in my size, fit like a glove, I would have not needed any alterations, and it was already bustled. It was as if it was meant to be. Now when I tried on the dress, I liked it. You know, I was like, okay, this is really good, I feel good in this, I like it. And because of all those things just kind of coming to place with the size and the style and everything and the price, I bought it. And I wish that I had not bought it because six months later, I was turning to Josh on our couch on a random Sunday afternoon and I said, 
I don't like my wedding dress. I didn't look around enough, I didn't try on enough dresses, and I didn't sleep on it enough. It was a dress that I didn't feel like myself in. And that is probably the worst mistake that you can make. If you don't feel like yourself in this dress and you don't feel comfortable, it's going to show. And it showed on me too. So. Luckily, we came up with a solution. Um, because I was under budget with my dress purchase anyway, um, I started looking at bridesmaids dresses that came in a white option. And this is also a money-saving tip for brides that um, don't really have a super high priority when it comes to their wedding gown. A lot of designers are making bridesmaids dresses that look like wedding gowns and they come in white and they're probably not going to be more than like three three fifty, which is awesome. I can't believe that more people are not doing this. So I ended up actually finding a bridesmaids dress that I loved. It was just my style. I felt like I'd be really comfortable in it and it was by Priscilla of Boston so I ended up getting my designer label and it came in white and I went to a bridesmaids dress store and I tried it on and I was like this is my dress. I didn't have that lovey-dovey feeling. I didn't burst out into tears, but I did feel like me and I felt comfortable and I just kind of breathed this sigh of relief. So I feel like had I given myself more time to really think about my wedding dress, I wouldn't have made the first mistake that I did. Um, but yeah, it was pretty big. It was a pretty big cost investment with that first dress and I just completely blew it. So learn from my mistake, people. Don't buy a dress just because you want to get the whole experience done. Really sleep on it. I did end up going to Vera Wang during my shopping experience just to try on dresses because their dresses, the lower end dresses that Vera Wang had, did hit my original budget for my wedding dress. They started about 2000 and I went there and I was so impressed with the shopping experience there. The salespeople were just so lovely and they were so kind and they really put me at ease. and. They said, never buy a dress your first time trying it on. You need to sleep on it for at least one night, if not a few nights, and then come back, try it on, and see how you feel, and possibly sleep on it again. And I was just really impressed with that because this is Vera Wang, and these are sales associates, and they, you know, their job is to sell wedding gowns, and here they are telling me to sleep on it. Um, so I was really impressed with them. So yeah, that is my dress shopping experience. Um, so if anyone out there did make the same mistake that I did with my two dress purchase, um, know that you're not alone. Um, from reading message boards and stuff, I'm finding that this is actually a very common thing to happen and that breaks my heart because no matter what you spend on a wedding gown, be it $100 or $50,000 or whatever, um, it's an investment and you don't want to waste that money, especially if your wedding dress is not returnable. So I hope that sharing that experience did help you a little bit. So to break down everything, stick within your budget. Don't try on dresses that way exceed what you had originally budgeted for your gown. See if you can negotiate with the sales associate if you do plan on buying that day. Um, wear good undergarments <laughs> and don't bring too many people when you go dress shopping it's just gonna make things a little bit more difficult for you and like I said that's my honest opinion I'm not trying to judge people that do otherwise I'm just saying that in my experience that has worked the best try on silhouettes that you don't think you'd normally try on and keep an open mind and just take your time with the whole experience. You do want to order your dress. Usually the recommended amount is nine months before your wedding. I do want to recommend that you look as early as possible. I don't want to say you get a ring on your finger the next day you go out dress shopping. <laughs> you don't want to do that because often booking your venue first will dictate the kind of dress that you want if you're open to a few different styles. Okay, so that's pretty much all I have to say about wedding gown shopping. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I do apologize once again for it just being kind of this long tangent and ramble. But the last note that I want to leave you guys with when you are dress shopping is that no matter what you end up choosing, try not to put too much pressure on yourself because your husband-to-be is going to think that you're the most beautiful thing ever when he sees you for the first time on your wedding day, be it you know during your first look or when you walk down the aisle. It's going to be an experience. And honestly, when you're getting ready on the day of your wedding, when you have your hair and makeup done and you're holding your bouquet, you're going to feel absolutely amazing as well. So whatever you end up choosing, just know that it's kind of hard to make a bad decision when you, when you go shopping for a wedding dress. Obviously, if you absolutely hate it, you should probably keep looking. But it's okay to not get that feeling when you start crying over a wedding dress. It's okay. As long as you find something that you feel like you in, that matches your personality, that matches the style of your wedding, and that you feel really good in, that is all that matters. So I hope that was helpful for you guys. If you have any questions,
questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and I'll be happy to answer them, more than happy to answer them, especially since I have so much to say on this topic. So thank you again so much for tuning in and hopefully I will see you all soon. Thanks, bye.